There is nothing that says that documentaries have to be truthful. I mean, sure, it has to meet the dictionary definition of a documentary, which is a film about a real person or event, but there's nothing in these criteria about having to tell the whole story or portray your subject in a balanced way. All you have to do is talk about them. The film theorist just took me on an emotional roller coaster. He probably did the same thing to you, and he's an absolute genius. So, in this video, we're gonna talk about how he quote unquote exposed Shane Dawson. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health. And what I like to do is pull different topics from the YouTube community to try to teach you how to improve your mental and emotional well-being. So if you're into that kind of stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. So for all of my loyal subscribers who have been around for a while, you're looking behind me and like, yo Chris, background looks different. Yes, because Tristan and I are in the new apartment and we are nowhere near unpacking. And like, I was gonna try not to record a video until this weekend, because I've been so exhausted. But honestly, watching the Film Theorist video, like, I was just so excited to get home and record a video. So as soon as I'm done with this, I'm gonna be setting up the computer and editing and all sorts of stuff and getting this video out to you guys. See, I did it. So yeah, anyways, this is for anybody who has seen the new video from the Film Theorist about Shane Dawson and like, is Shane Dawson dangerous and all that. So if you haven't seen it, there's gonna be spoilers. But anyways, go watch this video. It was so good because what this video did was bring up like a huge, huge issue that so many of us have. This is a problem that I have. This is a problem that you have. This is a problem that your boyfriend or girlfriend has or your husband or wife or your mom or your dad. This is a problem that so many of us have, which is confirmation bias. And I've been wanting to make a video about this for so long, but like you guys, like we are these mindless sheep like in so many areas of our lives. And this isn't some tinfoil hat theory. And I'm so glad that the film theorists brought this to our attention because I think it can really help a lot of you. So let me break this thing down real quick and explain how it's harming your mental health and what you could do to fix it. So what is confirmation bias? What is confirmation bias? This is something that I actually kind of mentioned in the video I did about Rachel Oates when I talked about the neuroscience of beliefs, okay? So those of you who haven't watched that, go watch it, okay? But anyways, I talk about how Sam Harris, who is a neuroscientist, they did some of the first tests on like the neuroscience of beliefs. So when you believe something, when something is true to you, okay, it affects a part of your brain called the medial prefrontal cortex, okay? This part of your brain is responsible for ownership. So you feel like you own it, it feels good. Okay, when you believe in something, it feels good. So what a lot of us tend to do is put ourselves in a bubble. We surround ourselves with people who agree with us and they feed into our own beliefs, right? This is why, like, like when we get confused about how come they think this way, how come they think that way, how come da, 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 it's because we all live in our bubbles and we like living in our bubbles because when our beliefs are challenged, it is a big issue. It actually triggers the part of our brain responsible for fight, flight, or freeze, all right? This is, you know, just a quick side note, working in the mental health and drug and alcohol uh, addiction treatment field, this is one of the biggest reasons. This is one of the biggest reasons why people can't get clean, because we have to challenge their beliefs. The, the core belief that they have is that drugs and alcohol will fix all of their problems, right? And coming into treatment, we have to challenge that belief. It's one of the reasons why so many people pass away from this disease, and it's so, so, so sad. Now, a lot of you are struggling with the same issue, it's just that you're not taking these, you know, substances that can kill you and destroy your life. You're just, you know, maybe um, having difficult relationships or getting angry and you don't understand why, all right? This is why it's such a huge mental health issue. So as far as that emotional roller coaster, like, it's crazy crazy it's crazy how the emotions that i felt okay i was very mindful of my emotions i'm going to talk about mindfulness in a minute because a lot of you ask me about it okay but i was very mindful of my emotions all right so let's talk about my confirmation bias i love shane dawson i love shane dawson but the film theorist has this way of like opening your eyes and like showing you stuff, right? So before I watched it, I was I text messaged Tristan, okay? And I was like, Tristan, 
I was like, watch this video because this might change some of my opinions about Shane and I wanna talk to you about it, all right? Like, I don't wanna just come out and just be like, oh my God, film theorists showed me that Shane Dawson is an awful person, right? So that, that was my confirmation bias, right? I was worried, I was worried that this guy was going to try to change my opinion of Shane Dawson, okay? You following me? Then I started watching his video and he started going in on Shane Dawson. He promoted this thing as nothing is off the table, but it was clear that some things were off the table. I personally wanted to see Jake Paul answer for things like his business decisions and his merch, but instead, it all just felt like one big redemption arc for him. Which raises the question, should Shane have covered all that business stuff? Does it matter that he didn't? And most importantly, are his docu-series actually dangerous because of the way he portrays the people in them? So I have this phone where I keep notes. When I'm watching videos, I keep notes with timestamps and stuff. So if I gotta edit or use clips or whatever, and I pretty much had to erase this whole thing because I was writing down so many notes. I was gonna make a video like, just explaining why the film, film theorist was wrong until he got to the ending, okay? So think about that. So before, I was worried that he was gonna try to uh, change my beliefs about Shane. Then when I watched it, he was trying to do that and I got really defensive and I'm like, this guy, film theorist, he's awful, he's terrible. But then, come to find out when we get towards the ending, all he's doing is explaining confirmation bias and documentaries. And he explains that documentaries are not the problem. The YouTubers that you're watching are not the problem. You're the problem. I'm the problem. We're all the problem. We watch things that agree with us, all right? Like this is, I see this every single day. When I make videos about different YouTubers and how they relate to you and da 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 da, da like you can tell in the comments where people's confirmation bias is, right? Like if somebody likes the YouTuber I'm talking about, they're gonna get defensive of that YouTuber if I say this person needs to straighten up. But if they dislike that YouTuber, they're, it's a lot easier for them to agree with me, all right? So like something that Matt Pat was talking about in his video about Shane Dawson was these manipulation tactics that we use, right? In slow-mo with somber piano music playing underneath is manipulative, turning a simple walk away from the camera into something much more, a deep, meaningful, reflective moment where Jake's fake persona is finally dropped. A moment that screams, this, this right here is the real Jake Paul. Uh, and when I say we, all of us do this. Like, is manipulation always wrong? Like, I don't like, and I blame this on Bobby Burns, okay? And this has nothing to do with the recent Bobby Burns videos I've made, but I blame this on Bobby Burns. Since Bobby Burns' video like blew up about how YouTubers are manipulating you, people have just automatically thought that manipulation is a bad thing. Now. I think there's better words to use, but let me let me say this, like, okay, let's say I was in, a mar in the market for a new cat. I love cats, right? I'm in the market for a new cat. I go to the pet store, or I go to the, the adoption center, all right, because I adopt cats, that's what I do. That's how I, my, my kitty's adopted, Tristan's kitty is adopted. So I go to the adoption place, and there's a bunch of cats there, right? And then this cat looks at me with his big doe eyes, right? And I'm like, I want that cat. Well, that cat just manipulated me into getting that cat, right? So you see what I mean? Like, we're, we're constantly being manipulated. It doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. What we need to start looking at is, like, that this is happening all the time. Every advertisement you're watching, every show that you're watching, every YouTube video that you're watching, everything that you see on social media, media, everything is trying to manipulate you. That's why you need mindfulness. So let me break this down for you, okay? Why am I keep talking about mindfulness? Why do I keep talking about mindfulness, okay? The best way to think about mindfulness is to think about the opposite of mindfulness, right? Mindlessness, okay? Most of us are just walking around like these zombies, just with our confirmation bias like, oh, okay, you agree with me, you're, you're good. Oh, you disagree with me, you're bad. Oh, you know, and we just keep doing this. Our brain is in two modes constantly, attraction and aversion, right? Give me the things that make me feel good, push away the things that make me feel bad. And people who disagree with me, people who are outside of my bubble, make me feel bad. This is why we need mindfulness. So what I was talking about, at the beginning of this, um, about how I was on this emotional roller coaster. The reason I knew I was on an emotional roller coaster was because I'm mindful. I am mindful of, about, of the thoughts going through my head. I am mindful of the emotions that are coming up within me. I can catch myself. I can call myself out for my own confirmation bias. You see what I'm saying? This is why we need to practice mindfulness. See, a lot of you get it twisted. 
when I talk mindfulness, all you think of is like meditation and like sitting on top of a mountain in like a, a robe and ha, uh, right? That's not what it is. Mindfulness is a simple practice that you can do in almost any situation. Like I practice mindfulness Constantly, I'm being mindful of what I'm saying to you right now, right? When I'm having conversation, I'm mindful of, am I getting angry in this conversation because they're disagreeing with me? I'm constantly watching my emotions like they're a thermometer, right? Or going up, going down, going up, going down. I am constantly doing this. And you guys, here's the beauty about mindfulness. It's not nearly as hard as you guys are trying to make it out to be. It's not, it's not. Mindfulness is not about duration, it's about frequency, okay? So what I want you to do is just start practicing for five minutes a day, like you guys. I've been meditating like through mindfulness for a few years now, three or four years now. The longest I ever meditate for on average is maybe like 10 minutes, 10 minutes. And these are the skills, like am I some like guru of mindfulness? No but I can catch myself when I start having errors in my thinking, right? Like I'm only agreeing with this person. So here's a great example. The other day, I sent out a tweet, which you're seeing on screen right now, where I basically talked about, hey, like, listen, just because a big YouTuber is saying it does not mean that it's true. So I'm not gonna tell you who I was referencing, but there's something that a lot of people disagree with me on and when I, I ask them questions about where their opinion's coming from, 90% of them try to link me to a video that a big YouTuber made. And I'm like, are you serious right now? I'm like, so since this YouTuber made this video, you're just gonna agree with them, right? Like, think about how crazy that is, okay? Like, something I've always been fascinated with is like cults, but like, I see this all the time. I see it all the time. I see people constantly agreeing with people just because of who they are. So now let's circle this back to the film theorist, okay? And this is such a huge issue. You guys, it's, it's unfortunate, but no matter what you're watching, no matter what, there's always gonna be a bias. There's always gonna be a bias. This is why I do my best to just make videos and just tell you the truth and tell you my opinion on things, but I always want you to think for yourselves. I never want some kind of cult following where you blindly believe everything that I say. I am fallible. I am just like all of you where I am just a sum of all my experiences, my education, my mental illness, you know, all these things, just like everybody else. So when Matt Pat was talking about Shane Dawson in the docu-series, what it reminded me of is this, like, so a lot of you have found me recently, a lot of you, but if you look back, I, I got a lot of traction on a documentary on Netflix called Take Your Pills. This documentary is about the Adderall problem, okay, in the United States. And if you go look at the comments on there, you'll see, you'll see some of the exact same things that Matt Pat was touching on. Some of the things about how like, they're not telling you everything, they're not telling you all this, da 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 da, right? And like my argument like to that is like, okay, because that's not what the focus of this documentary was. Like, yes, Adderall and these medications do help people with ADHD, but the documentary was about the, the pill problem and the overprescribing problem. Like, you know what I mean? Like, no matter what documentary you watch, there's always going to be a bias. So for those of you who don't know, I'm vegetarian, but I know if I ever watch one of those documentaries about being a vegetarian or becoming vegan, they're going to leave specific information out to sway your opinion. Same thing with a, a pro meat eaters one. They're gonna try to sway your opinion because everybody is trying to play off of your confirmation bias. So the solution to this thing is, the solution is to start practicing mindfulness. Be aware, question yourself, say, why am I, Am I just believing this person because they, they have a lot of subscribers? Am I only believing this person because they're famous? Am I only believing this person? I was actually just having a conversation with Tristan. I had somebody uh, comment on one of my videos, an old video, right? And uh, it was really funny. They were like, um, actually, da 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 And they were like trying to disprove something I said. And they were like, and I'm a medical professional, right? And here's what a lot of people don't get about me. I don't care if you're a medical professional. like. Do you mean to tell me that a medical professional has ever, never been wrong in their lives? Like, I'm a recovering prescription pill popper, all right? Like, so for me to think that no medical professional has ever done anything for money, 
is crazy. So like, this is what I'm saying. I'm not saying don't trust anybody, but like check in with yourself, check in with your own value system, check in with your, uh, like, your experiences. You know what I mean? Don't just blindly believe everybody you watch. Don't blindly believe every documentary you watch. Don't blindly believe every YouTuber you watch. Question it, just ask a question. Like don't be a jerk about it, but just say, hey, is this real? Is there any facts to back this up? Why do I feel this way? Why am I leaning this way? You know what I mean? Just start being more mindful, all right? And you're like, Chris, how do I start with mindfulness? Just type in mindfulness app on your phone. It's 2018, you'll find some free ones, all right? Five minutes a day, I challenge you. But anyways, let's do this down in the comments below. Let me know down in the comments below, like, do you recognize your own confirmation bias, right? Do you get upset? Give me one example. Do you have like somebody who you stan, if you will, right? Maybe it's Shane Dawson, maybe it's somebody else, where anytime anybody says something bad about that person, you get upset or you don't wanna believe it's true, all right? Let's have a conversation down below, okay? But anyways, that's all I got for you with this video. The set will be different in the coming days, all right? But if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. And a huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And reminder, there is brand new exclusive co uh, content over on the Patreon uh, for anybody who is $5 up. If you wanna subscribe to that, boop, 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 right down below. All right, thanks so much for watching. Be mindful, and I'll see you next time.